now that we have a table all built and ready for data, let's go ahead and add some customer records to it. Here we are now sitting at the database window, and you can see here is our customer T. To open the customer T to put data into it, you can either double click on the customer T here, or click on it once to select it, and then click on open on the toolbar. Notice how the table looks kind of like a spreadsheet with only one row. That's because there are no records in this table yet. You can see at the bottom of the window, it says record one of one. Let's go ahead and add our first customer. Now notice the first field says customer ID, and there's a big auto number message in there. That's okay, that's normal. When we add our first customer, that should change to a one. So let's go ahead and hit the tab key and tab past it, and let's enter in a first name. I'll put myself in, Richard. Oh, look at that, customer ID one popped in there. Let's press tab, last name, tab, company name, tab, phone number. Now for now, I want you to enter in the phone and fax numbers just as a series of digits. So I'll type in 716-837-4685 and press tab. In a future class, I'll teach you how you can format that phone number to appear any way that you want with little hyphens in it or parentheses. And you can also force the users to enter in information in those particular formats. But for today's class, let's just stick with a string of numbers. Enter in the fax number next. Tab. The address field is next. I'll type in P.O. Box 1308. Now you might find that address field a little bit too narrow to work with, so you can widen these columns just like you would in Excel. Move your mouse right here over the border between address and city, and you can click and drag to make that wider or narrower if you want to. Tab, type in your city. Tab, state. Again, I'm going to stick to two-digit abbreviations for right now. Again, in a future class, I'll teach you how you can limit that so it's only two digits if you want. Tab, over to zip code. Let's tab over to country. Now, since I'm in the U.S., and most of my customers are in the U.S., I'm going to leave country blank. That way, all of my mailing labels don't print out with United States across the bottom of them. So only in the case of a foreign country will I actually put something in the country field. Let's tab over to notes. And in the notes field, you can type in pretty much whatever you want. Uh, such a swell guy. And again, you can make this field wider if you want to. Okay. Let's tab over to num employees. Now the default value is zero. I will show you in a future class how to change that so the default value comes up as something else. But for now, let's put in here 10. And let's tab to the customer sense field. Now the customer sense field is a date time field. So you can enter either dates or times or a combination of each. Let me show you an example. I could put in here 1 slash 1 slash 90 and press tab, and it changes it to 1 1 1990. Or I could type in here 4 colon 15 p.m., and it'll leave it as 4 15 p.m. Or you could do a combination of both. I could do 1 1 90 space 4 15 p.m., and that's what we get. We'll need to make the column a little wider so we can see what's in there. So you can do dates or times or combinations of both. Now one quick word of warning. If you type in just the day portion, the day and the month, and hit tab, it'll default to the current year, 2002 in this case. And if you type in a two-digit year, like 1120, I get 2020. 
that if I type in 1, 1, 40, I get 1940. Be very careful about that. The cutoff here is 1930. So if you enter in 00, 0 to 29, you're going to get 2000 to 2029. And if you enter in 30 through 99, you get 1930 through 1999. One of my customers runs a geriatric office, and they routinely enter in birth dates that are in the 1920s and even 1910s. So they have a situation where if the person entering the data in the database types in 1 slash 1 slash 19, they want it to default to 1919. And you can change that in Windows under your control panel in the regional settings. We'll cover how to do that in our Windows Intermediate class. Let's go ahead and enter in a credit limit. How about $500 for me? And active is a checkbox. You can either use the mouse to click on it on or off, or you can use the space bar. I hate having to stop and grab the mouse. So if you're entering in a bunch of records and you're using the keyboard, you can just hit the space bar to check that on or off. Now when I hit tab again, I come down to the next record. Now one of the nice things about Access is as you move from one record to the next one, your information is automatically saved to your hard disk. So you don't actually have to save your data every few minutes. When you move from one record to another, Access automatically saves your records for you. Let's go ahead and enter in one more customer, Joe Smith. Notice how Joe Smith got customer ID 2, XYZ Corp, and a phone number, and a fax number, and an address in Buffalo, New York, 14220. Number of employees, let's say 150. Customer sense, I'm going to say Feb-1-1985. And notice how Access converts that for us. You can get away with a couple of different types of date formats. Credit limit, let's say $1,200. And he is active. I'd like to take a minute now and enter in four or five more customers. Enter in some customers from some different states with different countries so we have some information when we go to build a query in the next lesson. And there we go. I've just entered in eight customer records. I've entered in customers from different states and different countries. And notice you don't have to have all the information on all these different customers. For example, here I don't have a phone and fax number for this customer. That's okay. Your database is going to be missing information here and there. I always say it's better to have no data than to have bad data. I would rather have my employees leave stuff blank than to put in bogus information just to fill the field. One thing to mention, if you make a mistake and you're entering in a record, let's say you've got uh, Herb Jones in here, and then later on you decide you don't want Herb Jones, you can delete the record by simply clicking over here on this gray box and then hitting delete on your keyboard. You'll be prompted if you're sure you want to delete that record, then go ahead and click on yes. When you're done entering in your records, let's go ahead and close the table down. And you might be prompted if you want to save the layout changes to your customer table. What are layout changes? Well, if you change anything about the way the columns are aligned or the width of the columns, those are called layout changes, just the way the table looks when it's in table mode. You can go ahead and say yes, and that information will be saved in the table. So the next time you open up the table, you won't have to make your address field longer, for example. And now we're back to the database window.